I am barely. <laughs> you don't like what's here? I love it. I love what I hear. Now, this is a funny story. When I first started to work, I, I went on 25 interviews before I got a, a job. I thought that was terrible. You know, it's a lot of to come to find out that's nothing. Anyway, I went uh, on an interview to Stanley Kubrick and Jimmy Harris. And I had been told it was for a television series. And I went in. And usually in Hollywood, when you go on interviews, uh, they say, hello, oh, what's your name? Thank you very much, goodbye. These two said things like, um, where, uh, do you date? Where do you go? What do you do? What time do you come home? What does your mother think of that? Uh, where did you buy that dress? They asked me questions that you know, I would have to answer that I did answer. And so when I went, when I, they kept me in there for a whole hour. It was amazing. So when I left, I was walking out and I ran into a girlfriend of mine who also went on all the same interviews. And she said, what's it like? I said, I don't know. I don't know what those guys are doing, but it's a whole lot of fun. You might as well just go anyway. I said, but I didn't think they were making a film. I didn't, I thought they were just amusing themselves. I was 14. Had you heard of the book? Uh, you write? Yes, I had not only heard of the book, um, a girlfriend of mine and I <laughs> had an older girlfriend who had the book. And we would go over and she would read us parts from the book. And uh, we all thought that was very risque. It, well, I was only 13 when we were doing that. But before I did the screen test, my mother uh, told me the whole story and made it very clear so that I would know what was going on. And uh, she wanted to make sure I didn't have any problems with that. Mother was very protective of my feelings. And you didn't have any problems with it? No, I didn't have any problems with that. <clears throat> I mean, it wasn't like I had to do it. It was only a movie. You know, I didn't have to have an affair with an old man. I just had to make a movie about it, so. And the you know the making of the movie was such a joy uh, they took care of me in every way they they were exceptional see when i after my contract was over and uh, I worked with other people, I was shocked <laughs> because I, I thought everybody in the movie business was nice. It had been my experience for years. And then when I found out how terrible it was, I was so hurt. I, I remember feeling hurt that uh, the people were so mean. What was the attitude of all the other actors towards you? I mean, you were inexperienced, right? Oh, they were all so nice. Um, James Mason, who is, who was such a wonderful man, he would come and say, Come on, kiddo, let's go run the lines. He wasn't running lines for him. You know, James Mason didn't need to do that. But he wanted to make sure that I was comfortable, so... In your characterization of, of Lolita, you, you have a lot of uh, skulls and wings and all kind of funny things like this. So a lot of those things came out of the fact that I was a, a child on a movie set for the first time in my life with nothing to do most of the time. 
did other things like this uh, uh, come from you? Like, I don't know, the, either the hula hoop or the chewing gum? Or... Well, the hula hoop was written in the script, I believe. But uh, I knew how to hula hoop. I was 14. Everybody 14 knew how to hula hoop. And I did, I, I think it took six days to do that. So I hula hooped for six days. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 4, 45, 46, 47, 48, 9, 50, 51, 52, 53. See how relaxed you're getting? Uh, the chewing of the gum, that was something of mine. I did that. To make perfect bubbles, what you have to do is you have to get the gum just right, and then you have to take your teeth and make it into a long thing and then you have to blow it very slowly <laughs> right, I believe you it's partly my fault I realize that is something that's happened on account of this horrible place all these people poking their nose into our business and I never see you anymore what with your soda fountains and your extra stop doing that I think initially, before they knew me, they felt that they were going to build a star. And in the fashion of the old studios, uh, create an image and it would go on for there. And, but after they realized that and understood my motivation for doing the film, and also I pointed out to them, I said, you know, you've made a tremendous amount of money off of me. And I think you owe me the respect to be who I am. I, I did your movie, and now I need to get on with the rest of my life. I'll be happy to work again, but not every second. So I did, a, a, you know, I did promotion tours for them that went on, I can't remember if it was one year or two years. Then Night of the Iguana had more promotion tours where I had to travel all over the world. This is not my idea of a good time. I hate the spotlight. I hate people looking at me. I don't like people, strangers, asking me questions. I like to be left alone, really. I enjoy my uh, my security, my safeness, with uh, with a private life. That's why we had so much trouble to find you. Maybe. Maybe. It's not that I'm hiding anything. You have to do when you were doing promotion for Lolita. You have to play the. To play the part of the hilt again, or God. what did I have to do? It was horrible. I had to travel all over the world. I had to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner with press people. In between that, we'd have press conferences and personal interviews. I got to sleep about three hours a night. I fell asleep in train stations, bus stations, cabs. It was a nightmare. I hated it. People asked me the same questions over and over and over and over and over again for a hundred times. Okay. What did you? How did you feel about making Lolita? How did you feel about James Mason? How did you feel about Stanley Kubrick? What do you think of Jimmy Harris? What do you think of Shelley Winters? Did, did Lolita affect your life? I was once on a television show, a talk show. My brother had just died two days before that. The interviewer opens his show by saying, and now I was 16 years old, he said, did your brother kill himself because you played Lolita? I didn't say a thing. I got up and I walked off and I didn't, I mean, I had, there was, I couldn't even dignify that with, with, you know, don't you have good sense, sir. I didn't, I had no words. I left that, and that's typical of the reason that I can't be a movie star. I never could. I should be moving on. I must prepare for my work at Beardsley College in the fall. And I guess this is goodbye. Yes. Don't forget me. Don't forget me.